Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are discussing the rise of the American Nazi. But before we get started, guys, what are we drinking? We are drinking Mondlift. From the Wild Acre Brewing Company in Fort Worth, Texas. And this is a 5.7 ABV. Yes. Yep. And an Oktoberfest. Yes. Oh. And I found out that a Mond Lift, I don't know if you guys knew this, is basically a Ferris wheel. And apparently is a big attraction at uh, Oktoberfest in Munich. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. Did you uh, did you pick this intentionally because we're doing Nazis and it's a German style of beer? No. Oh, okay. I picked it because Oktoberfest beers are in season, and I kind of I actually decided, without consulting you guys at all, that we're going to try a few Oktoberfests this year, and see if we can find one we really like. Yeah. No. And I want to actually try them when they're in season because yep. it seems like the few times we've had them. On the show, they it's been like out of season. Yeah, and, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's it's a little different. Yeah. All right, so what I wanted to talk about, I brought this to the, to the show because of all the talk about Nazis and fascists that we hear in the news lately, um, and I think it's a term that is uh, greatly abused. Uh, you know, if we we refer to anybody that we disagree with as a Nazi, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's kind of look at what fascism is a little bit uh, to begin with. And I'm 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 just kind of curious. Without uh, you know, without doing any studying or looking on, what what, what would you, uh, if you were asked what a fascist is, what would you say? Before I knew anything about it. Well, just just without looking at any notes. Right now, yeah. Like right now, uh, fascism is a uh, culmination of the state and the economy, where uh, the state becomes the controlling factor in the economy. Um, and and kind of dictates what's going on. Okay. Brutally authoritarian. Brutally authoritarian. Both very good definitions. Uh, the the character. I'm going to read the definition here from Webster's here. Uh, a political philosophy movement or regime that exalts nationalism and often race above the individual and that stands for a centralized autocratic government headed by a dictatorial leader. Okay. Uh, I think the importance here is that there's a. Uh, that you've got to have you've got to have both nationalism and almost always there's a degree of, of racism that comes from there mm -hmm. because when you take nationalism to its extreme you end up with racism right so you think about like uh, uh, Mussolini's fascism uh, in Italy uh, where where Benito Mussolini said that uh, the Italians are the heirs to the Romans and rightfully owned everything mm -hmm. uh, uh, you had Hitler's uh, fascism uh, where he took the socialist economic policy and turned it into a fascist political philosophy mm -hmm. where he said that the, the Aryans, and he greatly misused that term, but the Aryans, the German people, uh, were, the, were the superior people. So when you start looking at this, characteristics, just, just in broad scopes, uh, that, that they have to be authoritarian, they also really have to be militaristic for, for it to be fascism. Otherwise, yeah. you're just talking about absolutism. Yeah. Um, so, so you've got to be militaristic. Uh, they also need to have a strong regimentation of society. What does that mean to you? A strong regimentation of society. Uh, 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 dictating who you are and what you do and your place in the grand scope as viewed by the state. Yeah, strictly controlled social activity. Very, very strictly controlled and almost always a powerful class system. Um, where it's, where it's incredibly difficult to move out of one class and into another. Uh, low social mobility. Low social mo mobility. Uh, they're totalitarian to the extent that it doesn't have to be a, be a dictator necessarily, uh, but it, it needs to either be p power centralized in one person or it can be centralized in one party. Mm -hmm. um, so if you think about... Uh, Hitler and, and Nazi Germany, he managed to do both. He centralized right. into one party and then centralized into one person. Which I would imagine centralizing to one party lends itself towards centralizing to one person, yeah. the party head. Uh, it, it can. It doesn't have to. Uh, it, there, there are fascist governments out there. I'm thinking of Greece right now mm -hmm. where, uh, where the, the fa a fascist party has recently won an election in Greece. Um, and, but but there doesn't seem to be a an individual emerging as, mm -hmm. as 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 
the dictator, yeah. but it's a party that's that's declaring things. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, or like we were talking about Poland, or like in Poland, yeah. which you were discussing earlier. Uh, uh, it's almost always placed on the far right of the political spectrum. Mm-hmm. So what you'll see in a political spectrum, and I don't I don't like the spectrum because it's linear, mm-hmm. and it always you know you've got the Democrat on the left, Republican on the right, and you go one step further, and you've got liberal and conservative, and you go a little further, and you've got welfare state and lunatic fringe. Uh, you go a little further, and you have communism and fascism. They're mm-hmm. they're, they're mirrors of each other, but in reality, uh, what you're seeing seeing happen a lot of times now with political. Uh, Scientist, and the way that, that I teach both uh, in my class is not to see it linearly, but to see it as a circle. Yes. Because you know, as you go around, communism and and fascism are kissing cousins. They are they are similar in so many ways, and yet fascism is the arch rival of communism. They that they 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 are they are militantly against each other in almost every case. Um, so you end up with with using the same strategies. But a different philosophy behind it. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. I went on a drunken rant about the political circle spectrum thing. Yeah. One a, night. a one night. That's it's the same rant, just different nights. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that, that's kind of the the, the growing uh, view of how how it is. Let me ask you this. Yeah. What do you think is the connecting government? So, like, if fascism is over here, socialism is over here. What's the Space in, but you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, here's here's my issue with with the way you asked that is is socialism is an economic system, fascism is a political system. Mm-hmm. So you can be a fascist and a socialist. Okay, you can be in this th- th- this place where economically you support the idea of this of, you know of, of, of the state doing things economically, but you're using fascist principles of militarism, authoritarianism, to, to get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I have the same problem with, with with when they put communism and fascism on opposite sides. To me, communism is an economic system, while fascism is a political system, mm-hmm. and that's they they don't always they don't always jive. Yeah, well, and and you know, honestly, uh, uh, we 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 have the no one scale, and then adaptations of the no one scale. I mean, they call themselves different things, but it, it's yeah. it's all you know adaptations of the no one scale. Yeah, that square is uh, bullshit too. Yeah, and it is, and and you know, it, it's really interesting to really wrap your mind around all this. You 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 actually need at least a three dimensional scale, if not a multi dimensional scale of of. It's really a sphere, like the globe. <laughs> <laughs> of economics versus flat dish like object. Economics versus uh, 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 rule of law versus yeah. you really need all the major principal pillars that yeah. and I think there's seven that have been identified in a recent book, but you could probably find more. And then how much does the society, you, you know, know yeah, lean it, on that? It's funny you say that because I agree with you, and you, you said the Nolan scale is really bullshit and all this. Yeah. I, I and, and and I I think it's you take the Nolan scale, everybody's a libertarian the way, the way, right, the way right. it works out, but. I think what it's useful for, and it's kind of a side shot. I use it in my classes all the time, yeah. because it's useful if you got a large group and you're putting uh, putting dots there to kind yeah. of see where where a group falls. I Actually, think that's l- great for that. Let me amend that. The Nolan scale is great. The world's smallest political quiz is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. scale is yeah. Is, yeah. is is better than I think the linear scale. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I would agree. I would agree. All right. So let's talk about about, about history here, because fascism is as a as a defined political system is really a fairly recent phenomenon right now authoritarianism is not mm-hmm. militarism is not but the way it was put together as fascism is it's a 20th century uh, mm-hmm. concept and it grew out of world war one with the need uh the need to to to, to create an even larger army than we had ever had to have before and what fascism leads you to, it allows you to mobilize a massive amount of citizens uh, to fight in a total war effort. Okay, mm-hmm. and that's why Benito Mussolini, who is, it, is is the person, while he's not the political scientist that founded it, he's the politician that first made fascism <laughs> work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you had a system where uh, Italy was seeing the powers around it growing uh, at. It was in econ- following uh, the Great Depression. It was in an economic disaster, and this guy came out and said, "Look, if we just do this, I can fix this. We can raise an army. We can be proud again." We can- and-, and selling it as a nationalistic argument, mm-hmm. and it worked. It worked great. Il Duce, the leader, uh, right. M- Mussolini, comes out and is able to uh, uh, rejuvenate the economic system in Italy faster than 
anyone else was able to. And the whole world looked at this as a possibility. He, even here in America, we were looking uh, very closely at fascism as, a, uh, as an important counterweight to the growing communist threat. Remember, it was 1917 when uh, Lenin had his October Revolution in November. And uh, <laughs> he had his October Revolution and overthrew the czar in Russia and put this communist system in place that, that Karl Marx had called for 100 years earlier, almost mm-hmm. 100 years earlier. Uh, and the fear of this communism spreading meant that fascism was the answer to it. We needed to be able to raise these large armies. Um, so, it's, it, it's so funny to me that the world looked at an economic system and they didn't say that the answer to this is to trust in our economic system and watch it fail or let them economically actually get somewhere. They said, yeah, why don't we kill them? You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, well, to an extent, that's what happened. Now, that's, that's not ever how they sell it. Yeah. That's not ever how they sell it. You know, uh, your, your fascists tend to start uh, as, as very small groups. Uh, Mussolini was actually out, ousted from power. He had been elected. He'd been ousted from power in Italy. And he started organizing these groups of uh, street toughs, post-World War I guys that had come back from the war and, and couldn't find jobs. Mm-hmm. And he gave them a, a purpose. And he dressed them in, in, in similar uniforms. And, and, and they marched in the streets. And they, uh, at first, were, were just praising the, the, the beauty of, of Italy and saying, we can fix this. And as that group get, got larger and larger, the way they dressed became more militaristic. Mm-hmm. And they became loyal to Il Duce, and they, they started looking for ways to, to take over power. This was the model that Hitler was following. Uh, and, and again, you think about, you, you hear these people talking about how, you know, the group of fascists in America are a very small group. Well, the group of fascists in Germany was very, very small when the Munich uh, uh, beer putsch happened, when, whenever Hitler first tried to overthrow the government. It was a mm-hmm. small group, and they lost but it, Hitler got thrown in jail. He wrote his book. He became a hero. And when he came out, that group was larger. And they were able to, 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 uh, to build off of that. Mm-hmm. They were able to build off the victimization of it. And, and, and that's generally the, the problem with a peaceful society, right? Um, as much as I, I uh, applaud a peaceful society, the, the general problem with it is it was a very small group that took over the planes on 9-11. Now... The thing about a peaceful society, as, as we see, uh, it is very easy for them to um, flip that and rise to their own defense. However, uh, you know, it took three planes going down for the fourth one said, you know what, it, it's time to not be a peaceful society anymore. Um, well, it took three planes in minutes, but yeah. Yeah. But, but it, you know. I think you, you could still say it was one event. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I agree. But. The the point is the fascists always get the uh, the 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 quick the first sneaky strike, strike yeah. in there, and the the question is can the peaceful society turn that around quick enough uh, before it grows? Yeah, yeah. I I don't think you could call the nine eleven people fascists. I think you could. could yeah. No, 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 no. I'm I'm not I'm not making yeah, that comparison yeah. at all. Okay, I think you could look at the way that we responded that we had some fascistic tendencies in the way we responded. I don't think what we did was fascism. Yeah. No, no I, but it had some tendencies. I think it was extreme nationalism, which, yeah. which, which can, can, can reach that level easily. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just giving the example of the, uh, an example that people can relate to in their own time yeah, yeah. of the quick strike of a peaceful Absolutely. society. Absolutely. You, you could look at buildings being taken over by terrorists or, or, or even the, the, the shooting at um, Texas Tech uh, oh, yeah. where he... He simply barricaded the doors and put a note on there that this door will explode if you come in, right? Yeah. And the peaceful society had to like, okay, well, well how do we handle this? Yeah. Um, and it gave him time to, to do what he wanted to do. Now, uh, all that said, none of that was fascism. Yeah. But it is the point of, of whenever your opposition becomes militaristic, there is a huge advantage to be gained there for a short time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I want to talk about some of the people that have been accused of being fascistic. And uh, I, want to, I want to come right out and say that, that, that these are, 
I, I went through and read a, a great deal on this, and a lot of these are other people's opinions about who is mm. fascistic. And I want to talk about it as we go through here and say, is this really fascism, or are we abusing the term here? Okay. Uh, there's a, an organization that came about, uh, it was formed, I think, in 2005, I know it was the early 2000s, called the National Policy Institute. It's a great sounding mm-hmm. name, isn't it? Uh, but the NPI, the National Policy Institute, uh, is an uh, extreme <coughs> nationalist organization, uh, and, and a white nationalist organization mm-hmm. that, that came about in the age of Barack Obama in that time period, where they're, they're looking at it. And they believed that the white man was somehow losing uh, prominence yeah. and being abused. Was losing rightful power. Was losing yeah, rightful power. Uh, the thing about the National Policy Institute is while a lot of the members are the uh, descendants of, uh, not, not, not physically, but they're, they're, they're a, con- a continuation of like the Aryan pride movement and the skinhead movement of the 80s and 90s, they made a big change. They had this guy, Richard Spencer, that, 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 that is their president, and he has gone out of his way to uh, rebrand them as clean-cut uh, guys in suits. And they're, yeah, wear a suit, don't act crazy. Don't act crazy in Shave public. Shave your face. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to look professional as much as we possibly can. This, by the way, is the guy that came up with the name Alt-Right because he wanted to, to be able to, to link to the right with this, but we're the we're the alt right. Yeah, fires are uh, fires are for uh, uh, beer in the backyard, not crossed in the front yard. It's a good, it should be a shirt. No, yeah. no, don't do that. Um, so he would call himself a white identitarian. Okay, mm-hmm. we would call him a white nationalist, probably. Uh, now he is up there. He's giving his speeches. He's got his suit on. He's well spoken. He look he looks like a congressman when you hear him talk. Mm-hmm. He's a well spoken person. He's like the David Duke of the modern era mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. But he has advocated publicly uh, on, on several several occasions for the peaceful ethnic cleansing of non whites from America. Now, how do you do peaceful ethnic cleansing? I would assume he wants to ship them out but not kill them. He wants deportation or the other idea that, that, that's been taken Skin on. Skin bleaching. Uh, the other idea Dove. is dividing Dove. the United States up into racial states where there's a black state and there's an Indian state and there's a white you know, state. Uh, that's interesting. That, that, that's really mm-hmm. interesting. It is an idea I completely disagree with yet find somehow much more palatable than than previous ideas they've had you know and and i think that was probably one of one of the the big changes he's made um in, in that he's he's making their ideas palatable now i disagree because i don't agree with with racial cleansing or that i like the idea that we're all going to be cappuccino colored in like a hundred years ginger i'll be gone uh, <laughs> We're gonna ethnically so cleanse your people. So will I, and so will I, and so will like everybody who's not <laughs> cappuccino colored. But but the point is, while I can I, I I completely disagree. If you came to me and said we're gonna kill all these people, I would say you're a fucking monster. Let's let like uh, don't talk to me anymore. But if you came to me with the idea of like, yeah, we should just divide up into uh, fifty uh, 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 labs of experimentation yeah, by race, I would say. But wouldn't it require? And the OCD person has it ordered from darkest to lightest yes. from west to east. <laughs> and it would, it would require the use of the state because you'd have to have forced deportations. Yeah. Oh, of of yeah. course, yeah. It, it would be terrible on so many levels. It would be a horrible thing. But I look at that and I say, well, he's not trying to murder people. Well, but, I can, I can, I can, but, I can talk but, to this guy. Yeah, and try it's and, like you think you can have a conversation with him because yeah. he's not on that level of well, crazy. Let me ask you this though. What's the difference between that and the uh, reservation system that, that the U.S. put into place uh, pushing Indians on reservations? I don't think there is one. And, and I yeah. think that was an idea that was not only palatable to talk, palatable enough to talk about. We did it. Yeah. What about when we took the Japanese and interned them? The internment them? camp. Yeah. I mean, well, that was temporary. But, 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 you're, but you're right. It was, it was, it was race-based. But it, yeah. there, there's, I still think there's a difference between that and I, I completely agree. But if uh, it was Eisenhower, right? Uh, no, 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 FDR. FDR. Okay, so if FDR had come through and said, "We got a problem," um, and 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 some people are going to disagree with me on this distinction, and said, "We need to either arrest or kill all these people," everybody would be like, "You're fucking crazy." He said, "We need to isolate them in this area and watch them." They yeah. said, "Oh, yeah, yeah, 
okay, I can I can go. Which is still fucking terrible. Yeah, if, fucking if, terrible. For our audience listeners, if you're interested in that, uh, it's e- Executive Order ninety sixty six. You can look it up and read it. It, it. It's amazing. It wasn't just the Japanese. We interred Germans here in Texas mm-hmm. too. So mm-hmm. uh, interesting. Uh, have some and they heard. stayed, and now we have like. Some really good now food. Now we have Fredericksburg. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now we have really good food here. In, uh, isn't that the way that history goes, really though? The worst atrocities in history make the best food. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the, the Chinese Exclusion Act, the, the, the internment. The, oh, Lord. I'm just, let's save that for another show uh, I'm, I'm or telling, not. I'm telling you, I, <laughs> this is scary. I was waiting for him to work bagels into that. I was a little worried. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just saying. Um, so this guy talks about this uh, th- this white state. Now he specifically says that the, 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 the white state will be open to all white Europeans, uh, uh, and, and and calls for the ethnic cleansing of others out of that area. Out of that area. Now again, when he says ethnic cleansing, he's not saying killing them yet. He's saying r- remove them. Yeah, and Here's that's an, the scary part about that because you start with the idea of removing them, and and there are a couple of ways that 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 worries me of well you don't see him anymore how do you know they're not getting murdered and then the other one is well you've already agreed to like getting them out you want them out and it would cost way less if we just killed them first you get them on the train then you worry about where they're going right yeah the uh uh, yeah that's a good point the uh other thing that i found interesting about this guy is like is that when it came to the the jews uh, and i hate to use that term the jewish people there's a massive amount of Jewish people who, for hundreds of years, they are, they are uh, they may be the descendants of Semitic Jews, but they've been in Germany, they've been in Poland, they've been in those areas for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. Right. Uh, and those people, if you ask them to fill it out, they, they, they put white. They mm-hmm. put white on the form. He specifically says that anybody with any Semitic background would be uh, would not be allowed in this because he was pushed on that. Mm-hmm. He didn't say that at first. He said European whites, and they said, "Well, what about the the people of Jewish heritage?" Nope, not uh, nobody with Semitic blood will be allowed. So now we're going to have to submit our ancestry. I, I don't. I don't know. But and it's, it's, how far back does that go? You know, it's really interesting because one of the arguments that we're hearing in modern times is um, various groups who who speak rather loudly, yet palatably, I'll say, against certain ethnic or nationalist groups, uh, some even national leaders. Um, yep. I wonder who you're talking about. Oh, you know, just random <laughs> orange people. Um, but one of their big defenses is I have people within this ethnic group who are, or this national nationalist group, who support me. Here's here's Jose. He supports yeah. me or whatever. So I did an experiment. I was actually thinking about this. Uh, we were sitting in a in a Mexican restaurant yesterday. We were at a, a fundraiser out of town, and I was sitting there. We were watching uh, Fox News Deportes or whatever. It was Fox Sports. Yeah, it was Fox Sports, but it was a Mexican one. So yeah. so it was all in Spanish. And um, I was sitting there because Fox News is kind of a right-leaning organization. Trump has not been very friendly to the Latino people. Yet, you see these Latino people coming out and saying, no, I love what he's doing. So I, I just did a Google real quick. I said, you know, is this really different? Is this really a defense? Does this really mean anything? So I searched the term Jews for Hitler. There were not only Jews who supported Hitler at the time. There were Jews who fought on Hitler's side in the yeah, war. Yeah. And it, it, because they considered themselves Germans. Yes. Or uh, there was some Pol- there was a whole group of Polish Jews that I was talking about who said, "Yeah, he was kind of doing some fucked up shit, but we had a common enemy." Yeah. 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 And, and it was an entire battalion of Jewish soldiers sure, who sure. fought alongside Germany. Yeah. And, and so it's really interesting that. I look at that and I say, okay, does that really mean anything? So then I look back in history and I say, that's always been the case. There's always been the Jews for Hitler or the because you know, no group is a block. Exactly. Yeah, you're yep. exactly right. Yep. So anyway, I, I was I was thinking about that the other day and I, I kind of did some some research and, and found no, it's not new. No, I have a Jewish friend that likes me. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I exactly. Understand. I yeah. understand. I've I've seen that a lot. Uh, you know, this is my black friend. Yeah, uh, I, I, I I've seen that a lot. Uh, oh yeah. So. This guy, again, while he's gone out of his way to, uh, to kind of separate himself from Nazi, Nazism, and if you ask him, I'm not a Nazi, I'm not a Nazi, there is video footage of him 
at a karaoke bar giving the Nazi salute to Milo Yiannopoulos. Uh, doing the, the Nazi salute. Now, my question is, is the he The Bellamy salute. The, the Nazi salute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With hand, palm up in the air. The, the one we uh, used to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, the one that is now yeah, synonymous. I agree. I agree yeah, yeah. But I'm just making but, a point but, about history. Yeah. But we stopped doing it because, hey. of it because of its connection. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. The original Pledge of Allegiance, we, we did the Bellamy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's... Then my question is, you know... It's a video from a bar. Was he making a joke and they saw this? Or yeah, what was, was the he, other context? What was the other context? But but we've seen this video uh, with he and, and, and Milo Yiannopoulos doing this. Am I saying his last name right? I think Who I am. Who gives it a shit? It doesn't matter, actually, um, but I think so. Uh, he was a, uh, Richard Spencer was also a featured speaker at the Unite the Right rally in, Charlottesville, uh, in Charlottesville Virginia. You remember the Charlottesville, Virginia, yeah. where the guy got in the car and... Uh, uh, Ran over several people. Yeah. Uh, they bought out bought out the the gun. People were there with guns. People people there fighting. Uh, and then there were the arguments Nazis made lists. that the victims were also doing bad shit. Yeah, I yeah. remember that rally. That was the one with bad people on many sides. Yes, go ahead, please. <laughs> but uh, he, th- this guy's speech has been 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 so hateful uh, throughout the world that he is actually banned today from uh, entering any European Union country. There, there, there's a travel ban on him. He can't go there hmm. because they see uh, they see things they've been through before. Uh, oh yeah. So I, I find the reason they give it that uh, they call it. They say that they're he's banned because of quote Nazi propaganda. Can I ask you something? Yep. Uh, I want to chase a rat for a little bit. That policy in itself is kind of fascist. It is. What what, what do you think of of banning? fascists from your country to stop the fascists from you know well, I, I, fighting I, I, fire with fire I, I get that I, I and I, I think you're right I don't think you could call, think you could say that that policy has fascist tendencies right but again unless it's unless it's got the militarism nationalism and racism all in there it's not really fascism it's authoritarian yeah because yeah. I look at it and I'm like man I don't think that's right and then I wonder what if they'd have done that to Hitler when he started his bullshit yeah well, you yeah, know, he would have taken the military in there just like he did anyway. <coughs> well, you got to ask the question: If they had banned him from speaking in Germany and kicked him the fuck out, would he have ever gained the military? Or he'd have started it in another country? Yeah. So uh, I, I just I, I wonder about it. You know, maybe, maybe because he, you know he wasn't German; he was Austrian. Yeah. Ma- maybe he would have, but but do you think? Okay, let me ask That's you. That's why we don't let non-native-born people be our president. And, and this is a great man question. Do you think Hitler dropped into any other country, not as a nationalist of that country, but you pick him up from Germany and plant him anywhere, would have been as successful, or was he successful because he was at least familiar enough with the culture and the situation that was brewing around Germany that it was like a perfect storm that allowed him to rise? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think he would have risen to the top in any society. I think that I think that that, that he not might not necessarily have been able to have done the same things, but I think his personality would have, would have would have brought him to the top. But you're not asking would he have risen to some sort of acclaim, but that yeah. he would have risen to that acclaim and then proceeded to do similar or yeah, the same I, things, I, I right? I don't know because I think if you put him anywhere else, he's, he's, there's different there's different experiences that, that mold the person. So. Yeah. Well, in my my yeah. understanding is that a lot of the reason that he was able to come to power was because Germany was in such a desperate situation and he offered them hope. Yeah, Germany Germany um, was abused by <laughs> by the US yeah, and Russia at the, in, at the end of World War 1. I'm kind of asking both. Yeah. So so yeah, I, I am interested in how far he would have gotten and and I am asking what he have gotten there. But you know, I guess, you know, to get to the heart of my question, if you drop Hitler in America does America, you know, become the next Germany. I mean, does a Nazi party rise in America the way it did in Germany? Yeah. Nazi party did rise in America. Uh, they, they, you know, they, they, they managed to sell out Madison Square Garden. The Germans yeah. did march. Uh, it, and uh, again, if it wasn't, we didn't have that great, that great charismatic leader to take that next step here. But, but they were, Nazis was, were big in the U.S. Yeah. And the violence was happening here in the U.S. It was happening. Uh, we had Franklin Roosevelt, which, you know, there's a lot of problems with Franklin Roosevelt, but Roosevelt could have been Hitler, and he do, and he chose not to be. Yeah. Hmm. You know? You but, got, I mean, i got to give the guy credit for that. Yeah. Right. He took a lot of lot of power, but he but he could have taken more. Yeah. Because we were going through the same kind of crap. Okay. Um, so I, I kind of wonder about that kind of stuff. Uh, so 
before I go to the next guy, now you've heard about this guy, fascist or not? Do you think it's a fair fair uh, statement to call him a fascist? Hmm. I think he definitely wants to be. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like he doesn't, because it seems that part of being a fascist is having the resources, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think he definitely wants to acquire the resources and be a fascist and and execute the the uh, policy things that he's advocating for uh-huh. through military and a dictatorial style. So, yeah, I think he wants to be. Okay. I, I actually completely disagree with that. I, I think that is equivalent to saying uh, you're not gay until you're a guy who gets a boyfriend or a girl who gets a girlfriend. Uh, I, I think your desires and attitudes determine your sexuality. And then whether or not you're able to land somebody that you desire is, is kind of a completely different issue. Um, mm-hmm. As far as is he a fascist, um, he's definitely an authoritarian. He definitely has a lot of the markers of fascism. The one question that hasn't been answered in this talk is his economic kind of ideas, which I think are a key factor. But right now, not knowing that, but knowing all the other pieces, I think he probably is. Yeah, I think he meets the definition. Uh, uh, If you look at it, he exalts nationalism. Uh, he exalts racism. He's uh, authoritarian. He's militaristic. He's got he's got his his his, his gang of people that that, that yeah okay him. fair enough. Uh, he's strongly opposed to communism. Uh, he he wants a wants a, a total one party state. He, mm-hmm. he seems to fit all the definitions. I would I would say that that Richard Spencer is in fact a a, a fascist, and I think his National Policy Institute is a a fascist organization. And I can concede your point, John, on okay. intent versus action. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would agree there too. Next guy I want to talk about is Gavin McInnes. Um, this is one that that uh, I feel like I know that name. Oh, uh, you 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 have seen him uh, a lot of times. He's uh, he's the uh, uh, the founder of Vox. He's uh, and I'm sorry, Vice Media. He was a Fox News correspondent. He was on the Blaze for a while. Oh, um, oh. he's he's been around, he's been fired from all these jobs because he has a big mouth what uh he, he continuously gets fired and starts a new th- starts something else and he's very good at self-promotion uh interestingly enough he does refer to himself as a libertarian and says that he is part of the new right now you, you still got that right idea he's not alt-right i'm the i'm the new right um Breaking. now it, you look at these some of these def th- these, these quotes in 2003 gavin mckinnis said this is a quote I don't want our culture diluted. We need to close the borders now and let everyone assimilate to the Western English-speaking way of life. Hashtag yeah, well, a libertarian. Yeah, so I, I mean, okay, I, I'm probably you know gonna 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 have some personal feelings on this one, but okay. So so his first quote goes completely against both national and at least Texas state platform. I can't imagine any other state having a platform like that, but I have to admit I haven't read them all. So it goes against at least national and, and Texas state platform, but go ahead. Uh, so so he's, he's already come out and said that, that you know, with, with this idea that uh, close the borders, everybody assimilate. To me, you've got a racist policy there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, he, so he meets that. He's not going so far as saying separate states or, mm-hmm. or, or ship people out, but stop anybody else from coming in. But we he's have, saying cast off the culture that cast your, off your ancestors culture. were yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and I, I've actually heard him go on beyond this, and he makes a, he makes a well-spoken argument about it. I think he's wrong, mm-hmm. but he makes a well-spoken argument when he s- says, you know, that— uh, you know, this is how empires fall: is they get they get diluted and they lose their culture. And and the fact is, that is how how how, how empires fall. I just don't know that it's that's a bad okay. I don't know that it's a bad thing for empires to fall. Yeah. Okay. That's what the Roman Empire. That's fell how for. shit changes. When you talk about about the Ro- the collapse of the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire didn't collapse because of invasions. The barbarian invasions they talk about was was things were better in Rome and people moved there and they mm-hmm. changed the culture. Okay. So that's that's kind of what he's talking about. Well, uh, I mean, so so you you can say that people lose their culture, but one thing I would have to ask is, is it because they lost their culture, or is it because they gained a bad culture? For instance, um, we sometimes have updated um, medical policies, right? Yeah, you're giving CPR. Don't worry about the breaths anymore. Work work on the compressions. Sometimes those policies are bad, right? 
Um, I can look at the, the, the food pyramid. We could do a whole show yeah. on that one. Um, I, I can look at... I was I was listening to a podcast on, on marathons from 100 years ago. It, it was about a guy who did a 54-year marathon. I, I watched that one. Yeah. yeah. But they were talking about, at the time, the medical policy was... They thought sweating caused fatigue, yeah. so they wouldn't drink water. But they would take strychnine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but, but anyway, so there can be policies that can change, and they can change for better or worse. And, and, and we've seen our culture change throughout America over the time. So is it that they lost their culture and losing your culture is inherently bad, or is it that they gained a really bad culture? Does uh, that I, make sense? I, again, I, 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 don't, I don't think that he's right in his argument. I think it's a well thought out argument to say, look, this culture was succeeding. People came in and it changed. But I get the idea that you don't agree with his his solution, but you do agree that it was the loss of culture that caused these empires to collapse. So I'm asking you, was it really the loss of culture or the gaining of a bad culture? I think it was the gaining of a bad culture. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. But again, the argument that, that your culture changes, I think, is a logical argument. Okay. Now, I think where, he, where he's coming from is wrong and where he gets to is wrong, but he's make a logical argument. Okay. You can be logical and still, still, still fuck things up. Well, and I think calling it a loss of culture is... Uh, speaking as though culture is static, but it's not, and it can't be. You're right. Remember when we lost that culture and allowed women to vote? Yeah, you're or that at, one time we lost that culture and ended slavery? Or that, you know? You're absolutely yeah. right. It, it, it shouldn't be static. Uh, but but again, words, not even words shouldn't mean be. Things. Can't be. It uh, can't be yeah. static. I'm with you. Yeah. But yeah. again, words anyway. mean things, and I do think you did lose that culture. Yeah. For good or bad. Yeah. Um, all right. So this guy. Has, uh, <laughs> Again, he's tried very, very hard to to distance himself publicly from from any kind of fascistic or Nazi ideas, but he cannot keep his mouth shut. Right. And this is another quote for him: uh, that white women's having abortions and mass immigration is leading to white genocide in the West. He is suggesting that uh, uh, the West, and that he's not just talking about U.S. He's talking about Europe as well, is leading to a decline in in white people. It's white genocide. Um, and you know, there, there's, there's, uh, the genocide argument is is shocking, but it it is a fact if you look at it that uh, places like France, Norway, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Germany, I think Germany, I'm not sure of Germany, Italy, I know, I know France, Norway, and Italy for sure, are at a non-replacement level of uh, of, of of replacement. They're, they're below 1.1. So you have. Native peoples that are that are dying out, and immigration is higher than that. Mm-hmm. So his argument is that we are losing our culture because of, in his case, he, he would say immigration and abortion. Um, I, I don't know. It, 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 it's shocking to me to, to read this. Uh, but again, there's a logical argument that he, that he puts there. You know, it, it's too bad that there's not some person who is smarter than everyone else in American Europe to come through and tell them how to live their lives so they can... <laughs> preserve their culture that would it's just a shame that that hasn't happened you know because in the past that's been so successful uh, yeah. but uh, again he's, he's making an argument here right, i know that i, I know. think you can look at facts and and he's cherry picking his facts but he's making an argument and i think people people will buy into it because you can cite facts you can make the argument that 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 white culture is dying the same way you could make the argument that uh, uh, manufacturing jobs, uh, as as well as a lack of people's interest in the farm, is leading to a decline in the horse and buggy. Sure, sure. Yeah. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. Yeah, right? I, I'm, I'm yeah, with you. Yeah. I'm with you. I, I'm not not defending yeah. him. I'm, I'm just, I, I know. I know. I'm, you I'm are. just trying to point out that that what he's doing here is what is what fascists do. Yeah, he's and I'm finding I'm, facts. He's putting facts in, and he's making an argument that, on the surface, appears logical. Well, and he's making he's using specific curated language. Yeah, because you can say that uh, the birth rate of people um, with light colored skin is at a non replacement level, and that. Data indicates that um, this is due to an increase in abortion among people of that skin color. But when you use language that says this is resulting in genocide, yeah. that indicates that is not genocide. Deliberate, yeah. organized 
vicious murder of people for the sole reason of their nationality or their race or something like that. At the worst, at the very worst, it's suicide. At the very worst, as a race. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, it, but, but it's an interesting argument that he makes here. Now, again, this guy has 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 come out over and over and say, "I am not a Nazi. I am not a Nazi. I'm the new right." Yet, here we go. He goes to Italy. Or, I'm sorry, goes to Israel on a trip in 2017, not very long <coughs> ago. And on this trip, he was see, he, he was videoed defending Holocaust deniers saying that, uh, uh, that the Holocaust is exaggerated. Uh, not saying that it didn't happen, but he's, he's, that it's, it's greatly exaggerated, and said that if people were really mad, uh, mad about World War II and the rise of Hitler, they should blame the Jews because the Jews were responsible for the Treaty of Versailles. That's, wow. That's pretty, pretty blatant right there. Uh, while he was there, he also produced a video for, uh, for, for Rebel, which was after he got fired from Vice, he, was, he founded Rebel. Uh, that was originally called 10 Things I Hate About Jews. It was then later renamed to 10 Things I Hate About Israel. I'm surprised um, either of those got to stay up. Uh, well, he owned the company, so uh, it, 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 it kind of helped him out, I guess. Fair enough. Uh, he publicly calls the Koran a hate book, uh, uh, which... You know, a lot of people 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 call uh, call the Koran that. A lot of people call the Bible that too. So, yeah. uh, but he's I'm not seeing him calling for extermination, but I am seeing him call for assimilation. I am seeing him uh, point at an enemy uh, and, and define it. And this is a a pretty big media personality. Mm-hmm. Now, he's been fired. Mm-hmm. He was you know he he was a part of Fox News. They fired him. He was part of Glenn Beck's The Blaze. He fired him. Uh, he's been part. Damn, when Glenn Beck fires you. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's no, been, Glenn's uh, not all bad. He, he's not a racist. He's got a lot of things going, but I wouldn't call him a racist. That's what I said. He's not uh, all bad. Yeah. Uh, he's defended Holocaust deniers. He's, uh, uh, you know, all, all these all these cases. Would you call this person a fascist? I don't know a whole lot about him, except for what I've heard here. But from what I've heard here, he seems to have very concealed intentions. So if I'm going to take him at his word, I would call him a uh, xenophobe or a racist, but not a fascist. But he, like you said, he seems to kind of step out of line and kind of reveal a truer self yeah, sometimes. Show his hand periodically. Yeah. And, and that makes me wonder. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I don't think this guy's a fascist. I think this guy's a racist. I don't I don't yeah. see fascist. I don't see him as a fascist. I don't see the I don't see the calls for militarism. I don't see the calls for that. Uh, he seems like he's trying to do it inside a democratic system. Uh, so I don't I wouldn't call him a fascist. I'd call him a racist prick. Well, how does he plan to enforce the closed borders and assimilation? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't I don't. Uh, I don't know that saying clo- I don't know that closing your borders is fascistic. Okay. Uh, I mean, I I, I I I think there's a I think there's a non-fascistic security reason to do that. Whether I agree with it or not, I think there is a reason for that that can be non-fascistic. Uh, I think it can be fascistic if it, if, if it's done for uh, you know for for racist reasons. But right. if it's done for economic reasons, I don't think that's fascistic. He sounds like he wants to do it for racist, racist reasons. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, and, and I think that, that you have to take that into consideration. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, authoritarian, maybe. But, but again, he seems to be wanting to use, he wants to do this democratically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, let's remember, Hitler did it democratically at first, too. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this beer, and then I want to go into, into two good. more organizations uh, and kind of go from there. Who would like to start discussion of this uh, Mond Lift Oktoberfest. Not I on. will. St- we knew that. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> you didn't have to say anything. We, we knew. I did one like two weeks ago. So it's always two weeks ago. Yeah. Every time we recorded, it yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, both I you love you, Anna. Chairs. I love you, Anna. So both of you. I'll go ahead and start. I was actually going to give this, you know, uh, uh, some in the high twos, maybe another two eight. Uh, I can't anymore. I'll tell you why. I've been sitting here listening to you, and I'm actually, you know, I'm drinking less beer right now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to switch to wines, yep. watch my sugars, and I am just devouring this stuff. It's good. It is easy to, like, forget, and, like, that little pleasure center in my brain says, take another drink, mm-hmm. and just, just sit here and, and, and passively drink. So I, I can't really justify 2.8. It's nothing that's going to, like, 
oh my god, that's amazing. But it's really easy to drink and it's good. I'm going well, to give it a 3-2. Yeah. Okay. Well, and it's very malt forward, mm -hmm. which I think, at least for me, makes a beer easier to drink. Mm -hmm. um, when a beer is hop forward, mm -hmm. it it is richer and kind of makes it harder to drink a lot quickly. Um, but that malt flavor, I, I think, like you said, kind of triggers the yeah. the pleasure cen centers of your brain and, and makes you like want more of it. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, I think this is a great example of a quality Oktoberfest beer. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to color the flavor, it would be like a like a fucking orangey brown, like, <laughs> like fall. Like it would be yeah. like the leaves yeah. turning and everything. Like it, it really does. I know. Shut up. Uh, it, but it really does kind of exemplify everything that you expect in a fall beer, I think. Yeah, yeah. So uh, with that, um, I'm going to give it a 3-0. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the beer, and I'm usually not as big of, a, of an Oktoberfest guy. If I do, I want a lot of spices in it, and this doesn't have that in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a great beer. I, I, I'm enjoying it. And this, this, is, this is where I run into my problem is I want to give it a really high rating because I like the beer. And then I go, I don't think it's a great Oktoberfest beer. I think it's a good Oktoberfest beer. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've said that for the last three Oktoberfest beers we've had, and now I'm thinking, I don't know what the fuck an <laughs> Oktoberfest beer is. So uh, even though I've dr been drinking them my whole life, I'm sitting here going, you know, the last three that we've drank, I've hit for the same thing. So maybe I'm wrong on what an Oktoberfest beer is supposed to be. Uh, so I'm going to rate... It could do with some nutmeg. I think it needs some kind of amazing. spice. But I'm going to rate this uh, not as an Oktoberfest, but as what Mike likes. Is this, is this a good beer? And I think this is a really good beer. I'm going to go 3-2. Okay. Very um, cool. Yeah. Uh, which is which is kind of kind of strange for me. For me. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's play our game. What is our game? Fuck Date Lawnmower. Fuck Date Lawnmower. Let's hear it. Um, not a Cosby beer. That's good. Yeah. Um, it is a beer that you can 5. have. 5.7. Yeah. That you can have several of. Um, I think this is a great beer that will fit a lot of environments. Um, so with that, and I think that it's great at your white pride rally. Or you could <laughs> skip that. Well, it's a German style, so that's why I thought it. Yeah. Or you could skip it. Um, we'll get you laid at the at the white pride rally. Hopefully, nobody's getting laid at the white pride rally. See, and that's why the genocide's happening. You know what? It, oh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say the thing I was about to say. But instead, I'm gonna talk about this beer <laughs> and how I think it has a wide audience that will really like mm -hmm. it. Um, so with that, I think that it'll get you laid again. And I've said this on a lot of them. It's not gonna seal the deal, but it's gonna head move you in the right direction. Okay. All right, uh, which date? Uh, I'm going to say, you know, this... So you mentioned the spices, and I actually tend to agree with both of y'all. It needs something else to be like an excellent craft beer. But what it excels at is, instead of being that spicy, excellent craft beer, it it is kind of a, a conversational, uh, uh, lighter beer that you can sit and enjoy, and it's good. It's going to make you want to drink more, but it's also not going to overwhelm the conversation. And so with that said, uh, I would put this this beer anywhere in the pack as long as it's an end season. So if it could be a first date beer, um, as long as it's September, season, October, November. Yeah, as long as it's that time. Or, you know, uh, if you've been dating for nine months now because you missed the window and you're coming up. Yeah, grab one of these. I, I think this is this is a great beer to get to know somebody better with or have a great conversation. So yeah, yeah, uh, not a lawnmower beer. It's beer to me at all. I, 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 as good as it is, I don't think I want to want to. It's not it's not a refreshing on a hot summer day. No. Uh, this is a bonfire beer. Whenever you've got your buddies out, yeah. and you're drinking out of the out in the pasture. Yeah, this is a pasture party beer. Whenever you got got a good bonfire going. So uh, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we are. 
Um, yeah, I feel like we're going to get a lot of not lawnmower beers as we move into That's okay. The winter. That's all right. Yeah, it's fine. It's right. They don't all have time. to be. It's exactly. not lawnmower season anymore. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's bonfire season, which, by the way, we need to do a bonfire one day as, oh, a, as a show. Oh, so much fun. Just sit around, drink beer, and put and go out live on, on, on the air to bonfire. Mm. The tech guy is not happy with your idea. I don't care. I, I, don't, I don't give a shit. We make it work anyway. All right. We can do it in my front yard in the middle of nowhere. We'll, we'll be good. I, I, I can run a cord there. We'll be fine. <laughs> uh, we'll, need, we'll need weather consideration. We'll talk about it. Tech guy's not happy, but he'll make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all or right. we can just do a bonfire for the fun of it. Or we could burn down the house. We could just right here. We'll sit and just the, do let's it. Let's talk first. We'll okay. just do it at the pool right, hall when it cools it. off. No we'll, arson, John. No arson. We'll raise the garage door at the pool hall, have a fire out there, and we'll just do it there. there oh, that'd be, there. That'd be much that'd better. Be yeah. Perfect. See? If, here we go. All right. I want to talk about uh, a couple of organizations here that are uh, uh, pretty big in this movement. Uh, but they're big in influence, not in membership. Okay. Uh, the first one is Identity Europa. Have y'all ever heard of Identity Europa? I have heard the name. I have no idea about anything of them. I was curious with Anna because you're still in college right now. And where these guys are active is on college campuses. Mm -hmm. Now, you're in a smaller regional mm -hmm. college. So you're probably and a very conservative one. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's going to have a little different idea. Uh, but Identity Europa refers to themselves. They call themselves American neo-Nazis and white supremacists. They are not trying to hide this at all. Holy shit, you guys um, calm down. They're, they're, they're out there. Or they, don't. They have been identified by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a hate group. Uh, uh, the ACLU has sued them repeatedly. They, uh, and and they're, they're a pretty new organization just since, the, since about 2011, I think, is when they started. That is really new. Uh, they, uh, they praise Nazi Germany, and they push, this is a quote, for the Nazification of America. Uh, by the way, I want you all to see this. I, I know it's an off show, but you know I read these to myself. Right. And look what it says here. When it, where, where, Nots of occasion. <laughs> Nots of occasion. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, that's, that's amazing. The Nots of occasion. What these guys are, 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 are phenomenal at is, uh, is, is distributing slogans and flyers, uh, stickers. They like to carpet uh, college campuses with, with racist Nazi propaganda. Uh, they put banners up. They show up. These are the ones that march on campuses. These are the ones that uh, you know. They have they've got about 200 members or so. Uh, in 2016, they had roughly 200 members, which is less than the flat earth groups have. But they are incredibly. <coughs> I prefer active. the flat earthers. They are incredibly a active. They probably probably overlap a little. Um, I'm sure they do. Uh, but uh, the, these are the guys that they did two th things that you'll probably be familiar with. They originated the slogan, you will not replace us. You remember this oh at God, Charlottesville, they would chant, you will not replace us, you will not replace us. Yeah. Uh, we, used to, we heard this a lot at, at, at some Trump rallies, too. Yeah. Uh, Trump tried to distance himself from that, and they tried to stop it. But you heard that at, at, at some of these. Uh, uh, they do exclude Jews from membership because it considers Jews to be non-white. Um, the other thing Identity oh, Europa is famous is. for, and I want y'all to see this picture. Uh, I'm sure y'all have seen it before. If you can put it up on the air yeah, when you get yeah. there. Uh, these are the guys that made the Kickistan flag. Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, that goes back to World of Warcraft and kick from L LOL. Kekistan. All this Kekistan. But this is the Kickistan flag that they run next to the Nazi flag. That's what they fly at the. At, I hadn't at, seen that. That's what they fly at the uh, at the rallies as a Kickistan flag. And if you uh, if if you if, uh, if you can put that up, I'd appreciate it. Yeah. But if not, uh, it's just basically. Do you want both of them so they can see the comparison? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just that, basically yeah. a green and black flag uh, where they've replaced the red with green and put K's in place of the yeah, they, Nazi they, symbol. They, they can see it. They can uh, see it. So, it's uh, it's at least. But our listeners can't. It's oh, at yeah. least interesting to uh, uh, to look hey. at. If you're listening to this and you have no idea what we're talking about, <laughs> check us out on YouTube. Yeah. Um, so, so let me ask yeah. you this, um, and, and I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so, so let me ask you if you think this is a true statement. Not all Trump supporters are members of Europa. <laughs> but if you're a member of Europa, you probably support Trump. Is, is that a fair yeah, statement? I, I don't know if it's... A, I, I want to say yes, but, I'm, but over and over when I see the members... And I hate to say it, it kills me, but over and over, every case I looked up for these people that, that, that were members of this, every one of them said they identified themselves as libertarian. I oh, don't say that. And it, it breaks my heart. I know. Um, but that's what, that's what they believe they're doing, you know, whether funny. they are or not. You know, it's funny that they say that. Um, and, 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 and it's depressing, too. Uh, it goes so far against our platform. 
I have been to many libertarian candidate rallies uh, for national ones that I have been able to been to. I've watched them, all, you know, online. I have never rallies, s- conventions, fundraisers, all that. socials. Yeah. I've been involved everything. in all that. I have never seen a "They will not replace us" chant at a libertarian rally. No. No. I think well, they would get shut down very quickly with a louder well, and chant. They, and they do. Oh, not that. Okay, we haven't had the chant, but we have had nationalistic, racist people try to come in and take over. And every we had a group uh, here in Milo Texas. Milo tried to come through. Yeah, Milo also yeah. did a thing. He almost got his ass whooped, and there were a bunch of... It was funny, because you know we have the NAF, and, and we strongly believe in it. There were some libertarians that were like ready to go whoop his ass, and, and there was like a whole group of others that was like, yeah, fuck him. But you don't get to whoop his ass. That yeah. goes against yeah. everything we believe. And okay. there was actually this, 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 like, this, this fight within libertarians of like, we can't let you do that because it looks bad on us. Yeah. And yeah. anyway. But I mean, here in Texas, in at our 2018 state convention, we had a group of people who wanted to forcibly deport from wanted Texas to secede from the U.S. and wanted to forcibly deport anybody who was not originally born in Texas and who did not come here. Legally, um, and they <laughs> and they came to our convention and were swiftly and soundly with the with really no contest, just excommunicated from the party in yeah. every way, form, and fashion. I, and I, I, I'm in a tough place here because I really think we have too many Yankees moving to Texas, but I'm not ready to forcibly uh, to kick them out. I just, yeah. and, and, I just wish they wouldn't come. In fact, we found out one of the, the, the people who was highly involved, one of yeah. their leaders, um, had come into the party, remained kind of quiet, but then gotten on the platform committee. The first time in my, of my ever. knowledge ever... Yeah. Our executive committee reconvened and removed someone from the platform committee just for him like, associated with this vote group. just to remove that motherfucker from our platform committee. I and, love it. You oh, know, I know. You know, honestly, when you talk about about this idea of, of keeping immigrants out of out of a state, I am all for that. I just want to secure the northern border, not the southern border. Of Texas. Of Texas. Yes. 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 <laughs> I want to keep it, people from north of Texas from coming in. Uh, the, the, and west, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, just yeah. just the whole Red River all the way. To, yeah, yeah. Do we get Louisiana in? I mean, what, is there exceptions here? What about? Oh, what they bring gumbo. I like yeah, get Cajun food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. If you come to the border of Texas and Louisiana, a gumbo with, tribute. <laughs> yes, with some Cajun <laughs> food. Who's going to kill our alligators if we don't have the Cajuns yeah. come in? You have so. to bring enough for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> all right. The next group is the American Vanguard movement, which is it, it's actually a splinter group off of Identity Europa. Uh, because, of course, they can't keep their shit together. That's one thing we're seeing here is they don't seem to agree ever. Of they all not. have a common enemy, but they're, 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 there's no uniting. Some of them hate Jews more than others. Well, that and each group thinks that they should be the dominant one and wants to control everything, so they're not willing to, to you know, there's this infighting. Really? Fascists is, all think they should be in charge? Imagine. That's <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but I think we can deal with these two together. We dealt with okay. identity Europa, American Vanguard, or sometimes called Vanguard America. I've heard of them too. They they both on their website <laughs> they refer to themselves in both ways. So whether American Vanguard job, or Vanguard America, uh, they refer to themselves as white supremacist, neo Nazi, neo fascists. Uh, it was founded in 2015 in California, of all places. Uh, and they made a point, while the other ones, uh, while Identity Europa said, we have roughly 200 members, Vanguard America, you could tell, was responding because they wrote on theirs that we have 200 plus members. So, so if they have 200, they have 201. I love a whole group around the idea of people in, in the West maintaining their cultural identity can't maintain a branding identity. <laughs> like, yeah. it was too much for them. They couldn't handle it. <laughs> that should be their bread and butter. <laughs> right. They should be, like, PR geniuses. <laughs> right. Maybe oh. not PR. But branding geniuses, well, like, consulting for all of these companies look, that are look, having trouble keeping their shit together. Look, what's important is that we're the <laughs> vanguard and then we're Americans. It doesn't matter which order. I don't think anyone's accusing these guys of passing them <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, these guys took part in the, uh, uh, the, the Charlottesburg uh, 
Charlottesville? Char- Charlottes- Charlottesville rally. Uh, they're also so all these groups were in Charlottesville. Yeah, yeah. This this group also is known for for blanketing uh, college campuses. Mm-hmm. Much more popular in the West. Got their tactics. California in that area is where, where they're going to be the strongest. While uh, Identity Europe is more of an Eastern uh, mm-hmm. uh, feel to it. Um, <coughs> they also uh, when they marched at Charlottesville. Uh, there's there's video footage of James Alex Fields, the guy who kills the people uh, at, at Charlotte. There's video of him marching with them. Yeah. Now, they later on disassociated and said he's not one of us. He was just there. But there is video of him marching with them uh, in, in, in lockstep with them. Uh, and I use lockstep on purpose because they, they do they goose step. Right. Uh, so I kind of want to deal with these two together, American Vanguard and Identity Europa, because I think they're essentially the same thing. Yeah. They're, 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 there's a family squabble. Yeah. They're, they're Hatsfield and McCoys, but they, they really are the same thing. Are these guys fascists? Is it fair to call them a fascist? Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, I think so. I think in both these cases there are. Um, we're going get to out, get, get out of some of this stuff, uh, uh, some of these, these groups that are, that are extremely uh, – fascist and openly and i want to talk about some of the ones that really have gone out of their way uh to distance themselves from fascism and have tried mm-hmm. very hard to to to, to not be because um, that's largely become like the insult when you disagree with somebody yeah it, it, it has i so think it, they, they accuse bush of it they accused obama of it they've accused yeah. trump of it it's just it's what we do now yeah so it makes sense to distance yourself from this term even if that is exactly what you are um, and it, and it's a term that people so frequently misuse let's talk about Matthew Heimbach a little bit uh, Matthew Heimbach was the rising star in the, in the community for a while he's uh, he's the child of uh, of some some fairly well to do people believe it or not they made their money in cotton in Louisiana Um <laughs> And he's uh, he, he's from this extremely well-to-do family, but he doesn't put himself uh, out as that. When you see him speaking, he always uh, he's always kind of scruffy and unshaven. He's got the look of of, a, of an everyman, and he's gone out of his way to uh, to to speak directly to these people. It's obvious his targeted audience is is dispossessed, unemployed white men. Mm-hmm. This is what he is targeting, and he is incredibly well-spoken. The same ones Trump was targeting. Yeah. Uh, now, he, he, so he was a rising star that was speaking very well. Uh, in the last year or so, he's kind of, uh, his star has fallen a little bit. Uh, he was seen in 2016 shoving a black woman at a, at a Donald Trump rally. He, uh, he, has since been, uh, he has since been accused uh, of, or was actually caught having an affair with his mother-in-law, uh, caught by his, by his wife and her, and her dad. Uh, he, he's been in jail for this stuff. That's it, how you maintain your white heritage. Yeah, yeah, uh, inbreeding. Um, this it's guy hard to also find people that are just white. This guy also uh, <laughs> desires the U.S. be split into separate racial states. That's really his big argument. Uh, the rest of it, he's not anti-immigration. Fine, bring him in. Somebody's got to do this work, is the way he sees it. But we need to be we need to, to separate ourselves into mm-hmm. separate states inside the country. And the example he uses is is is. is how well it works with Palestine and, and Israel with the separate. Oh countries. yeah, that's... excuse me. <laughs> so, no, I I really do. I have a a genuine question for these people who advocate for physically separating the races into different geographic territories, because these same people seem to hold the belief. Many of them explicitly hold the belief that. Uh, they they call themselves white supremacists, or I guess white nationalists now. But they they want to preserve the white race because it's better than all the others. That's what they want to do. Um, so they think that white people are the best, and that it is the job of all of the other colored people to uh, do the menial work. He wants them to come in and do this work, which I'm assuming is all the jobs that white people don't want to do. No, he just says work. I'm, I'm not going to put words in his mouth. I'm assuming. But, but yeah, I said I'm I, assuming. Yeah, yeah. I I'm think ass- you're right. I'm assuming he wants all of the people of color to come in and do the work that white people don't want to do. But in the geographic region where the white people are, there's still going to be menial jobs to do. And I just, I, I don't see how it is that they fathom it no, working. We're going to have all the menial jobs are going to be in the other states. Well, so who is, who's going to pump your gas for you? 
Are you going to let a white, are you going to make a white person pump your gas? Is that what he's trying to tell us? Robots. <laughs> Yay, robots. <laughs> yeah, because there's going to be an innovation in a fucking yeah. system like that. All right, so th that's kind of where this guy is. Not nearly as much information. Uh, uh, <sighs> and, and, and he he very much is a supporter of, of, of doing things through the market uh, in ways. And he... Again, he goes out of his separate way. Immigration. No, no, he goes out of his way with this to say that he thinks we should have separate racial states, but he doesn't think it should be done by by force. He thinks it should be done by market conditions. Uh, give give tax breaks to people to to to, to, to do this or stuff. That's he's, not the free market. Well, but but he's but but it's not using the military or police force. Fine, right. Fine. That, that's the way he would see it. Uh, so he, he he would be a pro capitalist guy uh, now. Not my definition of capitalism, but at least his definition. Would you call this guy a fascist? I would call him. I think from, he would be from, when his shit didn't work. I, I would be from the from the. Inf well, he he went out of his way to avoid the military. Then I can't. I can't call him yeah. a fascist. I, I mean, I, I think fascism requires yeah. the use of military. And a pro proto fascist. <laughs> maybe I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is, I think that he's 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 definitely making these claims, and according to what he's saying, I think is cannot qualify as a fascist but i genuinely believe if he holds these beliefs strongly enough that if he were given the opportunity and he realized that the way he says he wants to do it won't work that he he'd employ the military yeah i i, I think he probably would uh the next group i want to talk about is the patriot movement and this is one that that, that to me is a little harder to do mm -hmm. uh, uh, and part of it is that I've, I've known people that are involved in this movement. It's a uh, extreme right wing of the Republican Party is where it's the strongest. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, it's the successor. <coughs> y'all are y'all are are y'all even old enough to? I know you're old enough to to have seen it, but are you old enough to really remember the the crazy militia movement of the early 1990s? No. Uh, there was there were militias just popping up everywhere in the, in the early 1990s, and they're still around there. But uh, this is the movement that was that was uh, that was really kicked off by the uh, um, the Branch Davidian uh, incident in Waco, right? And the fact that the ATF went in, surrounded this church, uh, and assassinated assassinated everybody. it people essentially. Uh, now they were, were they breaking the law? Yeah, they were breaking the law. Uh, but could you just have starved them out? Probably, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that's what inspired this patriot movement to go out there as, as a group of sovereign citizens. And that's the first time I ever heard that term, sovereign mm -hmm. citizen at that time, uh, looking at, 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 at ways to, uh, to, to fight against the government. Uh, Ruby Ridge was the second inspiration. The height of this movement was uh, the, the Oklahoma City uh, Federal Building, Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building, mm -hmm. when Timothy McVeigh was a militia member who – filled up a, a, a rider truck with a fertilizer bomb and blew the shit out of this building. Now that I remember. Uh, yeah, I, 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 was, I, I was actually on a plant round when I had, on the plant farm when, it, when that happened. But I wouldn't call these guys fascistic, but I can look at what they were doing and I can see a lot of similarities to the brown shirt movement uh, you know, of, of, of Mussolini and Hitler. Mm -hmm. I can see where this is coming from. And a lot of people do call these people fascists. Yeah, they're forming military-esque yeah. organizations. Yeah, but, but it doesn't seem to be around nationalism. In fact, it seems to be against <clears throat> nationalism. It depends, because a lot of them are, a lot of them, and, and, and people I know, some of them you know, whether you realize it or not, that are into this, uh, the state militia movement, are very much into nationalism, but they're into nationalism, 1787 Constitution, and let's go back to that. Yeah. Not, not anything since then. They're nationalistic to 1787. Well, let me ask yeah. you this, as, as kind of a definitional exercise. Those British people who said, fuck you to the crown and formed a nation, were they nationalistic? Yeah, I think to a new nation. Okay. Yeah, I think they they were nationalistic to a new nation. I don't think they were. They obviously weren't to England, but yeah, I would call that nationalism. Okay. Uh, and definitely. So you had two tourism. groups of nationalists fighting each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. we did, uh, and I think especially once the Declaration of Independence came, and we had two nations. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but I don't I don't know that I would call these guys fascists. Yeah, mm -hmm. th th that's a hard one for me. It, yeah. It's it's a hard pill for me to swallow, that somebody whose whole agenda is to defend people or themselves from the government is in fact nationalist now if they're doing that with the intention of starting 
a new government, which in its own definition will be nationalist, that's fine. But uh, fascist, that'd be fine. But in order to say that, you said they want to go back to, you know, 1776 government, you'd have to then define the 1776 government we had as fascist. And I, I can't do that either. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. But, but these guys are called fascist all the time. Yeah. All the time. The next group, which I have a really, an even bigger problem with, are the Oath Keepers. Uh, and the, the Three Pers by extension. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the Three yeah. Pers because they're, they're, they're an outgrowth of that. But the Oath Keepers are a group of a uh, group that, that comes out of the Christian right, um, and they tend they go out of their way to recruit a lot of uh, military police, uh, former military special force. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of guys they go out of their way to to create. And the oath that they're keeping is to protect the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now, in most cases, protect the Constitution means to stay vigilant. That's what they say. We're going to stay vigilant. But there is a group inside of that, the three percenters that come out of there, that form militias. That's an outgrowth of the Oath Keepers. They're still <laughs> closely related to it. Yeah. Uh, that say that, that we're, not just, we're not just staying vigilant and, 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 and talking about things. We're willing to stand up and defend it. Yeah. Uh, so... By the way, that three percenter always bothered me. It's, it, it, it's a completely wrong idea. They're called three percenters because there's this myth that only three percent of the nation uh, rose up to fight in, in the American Revolution. That's not my understanding of it. Yeah, that, that's where it comes from originally. Yes, that is. Uh, oh. And in reality, it was about 15 percent that did it, which is larger than any other war in, in American history. See, what I was told was that it was there was only three percent of the population fighting at any given time. Yeah, that, that that's not what it says on on the, the things I saw. Huh. Okay, well, but, yes, let me let me let me friend. I have that's what I've heard too. Only three percent at any given time. Now I don't. Yeah. But about fifteen percent of the people were involved in the American Revolution, okay. either in state yeah. militias or the, or the national uh, military. So, it's kind of off there. Um, but these guys, these three percenters, are often also called uh, called fascists because uh, that you know they're trying to preserve. They are trying to preserve a way of life. Mm -hmm. Would you call this fascist? I'm just kind of curious as to where we are with this. Yeah, it's a tough one, but, but, but it doesn't. Ha it doesn't seem to have. I have. It's got I have nationalism. Not, it's got uh, militarism. Where's the but, racism? But what I'm not and, seeing. So, I think the terms being used in two different ways. Yeah. So, and if you try and say nationalism, then I have to say that every government under a definition of nationalism is fascist in that it tries to preserve its own existence as a nation. If that's the definition you're using as nationalism, all governments are fascist. Yeah, I mean, but, our but government is fascist have, but, because but it sends the military in to quell insurrections I think that's a fascist tendency. So, all that said, every single existing government is fascist under that definition. But the kind of nationalism I, I was under the impression we were talking about here when we talk about this is the idea that you have a group of people and you don't let anyone else in because you have a bias against people from other nations. Yeah. That's a different thing. That is a different kind of nationalism. And I don't see right. that second thing in this I movement. Don't, I don't see it with these guys either. But yeah. I do see that they want a nation and and, and they think it should have certain laws. So if we're looking, if we're looking at that first definition, I have to go back to all those groups and kind yeah. of reevaluate yeah. my position. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I call those rebels not necessarily fascist, though. Yeah, I would. You know? I would not call these guys fascistic. Uh, in fact, I, in a lot of cases, I would call them heroes. Uh, but 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 you know, that's that's my own personal view. Uh, the next one is one that 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 surprised me: the Constitutional Sheriffs Peace Officers Association. This is a group of mostly rural sheriffs that got together and agreed that uh, that they were going to enforce the law as it's written in the Constitution and not enforce any law that they saw as extra constitutional. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? To me, they're, I don't know how they even get to fascism for this one. Well, they are shooting at less people in the world and therefore fascism. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Well, and my understanding of this organization has been that... They they largely like write letters about well this is wrong and we're not going to do this, but well, aren't actually taking any action. They are they are taking actions. The uh, who who was the sheriff in a uh, um, oh the one that locked all the put, locked all the people up in the uh, in, in the tents. I forgot. Oh, in the pink uniforms. Yeah. yeah, he was a member. God, yeah. He well, was a uh, member. But does that type I didn't of he was a member of that? Yeah, guy. yeah. I, I, does that type of behavior? 
because because I'd call him a fascist. Yeah, he's a yeah. But does that type? I don't of think he's fascist. I think he was authoritarian. Well, okay, he was racist, fine. and he used the militarized I don't know that he was police racist. force. I don't think he was racist. Like what? I, what, I didn't what see anything fine, racist. you're right. He was nationalist. Yeah, against yeah. Mexicans. Well, uh, against a lot of people. It wasn't. Well, well no, yeah. you're right because there was that whole case that the, the ICE, Supreme Court yeah. case was that he was pulling over yeah. uh, people of Hispanic descent. So and, and he was he using refused. the militarized police yeah. force. Fine, fine, yeah. fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. So. When you when you talk about the mission here, and, and the mission is to ignore laws that are overreaching, then I, I kind of agree. Now, if you talk about the behavior of that gentleman, I, I then have to ask, because I've not been following this group closely, is that behavior uh, uh, exemplary of the group, or are we talking about an asshole? Yeah, I mean, we just had you the whole conversation about how a number of these people are identifying themselves as libertarians, but in our experience in the actual libertarian party, that those people, even when they try to come in, don't get anywhere. Yeah. So is he an example, or is he a an outlier? outlier? Yeah, Yeah. I, I don't know. I would say that the, the Constitutional Sheriff's Peace Officers Association is not fascistic, but it has some fascists in it. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, other things that are that are involved in here, uh, there are people that accuse sovereign citizens of being fascistic. I don't want to go into that because I don't understand that even a little bit how you can call that fascist. Mm, yeah. Uh, the uh, they also accuse these these people that that use the the term refugee rape fugees as being fascistic the because they're that? a rape fugee is a, a it's the this belief that we are allowing uh, usually Muslims to come to this country. Uh, and that they are raping women left and right, uh, and it's out of control. Uh, like we've seen, we, we have seen this happen in. Uh, you know, if they could get through the Norway. fucking rape kits, they might have a better idea of who's yeah. getting raped and who's not. I'm but, just uh, saying. But I just, I, these are all terms that I found in a, in a documentary that I watched on this, and in all in, in these last cases, I I just didn't see it at all. I didn't yeah. see anything there there. But now that we've been through this stuff, let me ask your opinion: Is fascism growing in America? Do you think? Yeah. 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 I don't know that it's growing, but I think the the subscribers are getting louder. I think nationalism is growing. I don't know that I think fascism is growing, but I, I like your idea that it's that it's getting I think I think the uh uh the internet and things have made us more aware of it. I don't think we are as fascist to as fascist today as we were in 1930. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and what are we talking? You said, is it growing? Yeah. And, and what time skills are we talking about? Well, I'm just, I, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's growing over the last 10 years. Yes. But I don't think it's growing over the scope of, our, of, of, of the last 100 years. Yeah, and, and I'll make the same argument I made with Flat Earthers. You asked, are they growing or getting louder? And I said, those aren't mutually exclusive. In fact, they're, they're grossly correlated. And in getting louder, they grow. Yeah. And in growing, they get louder. And I think they are getting louder. And I think they are growing. And I think those two things are connected issues. Yeah. And I, I, I think that if they're going to get louder, then the voice against them needs to get louder. Yeah, yeah so. I agree. And, and I think that it is. I hope so. Yeah. Um, it's polarizing. Yeah, it is. And I think that's really what we're coming down to is that, and, and not on some one-dimensional scale, but uh, people in the United States are polarized in numerous ways. Men versus women, black versus white, white versus color, people of color, um, educated versus not educated white collar versus blue collar like any number of things we are incredibly polarized um so i don't necessarily think that that the voice being louder indicates that there are more fascists in the united states i think it indicates that more people are angry okay, okay. that sounds good to me well that's kind of what i had on american fascism and uh, uh if y'all do you have anything to add or well, very interesting, and it, I liked it. It was it was an interesting. I mean, topic I don't like fascism, on. but I liked talking about it. I like to be aware yeah. of it. I like to be aware. So, well, uh, if I want you to make sure you get a clip of that. That that Anna likes fascism. Got I it? didn't say that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if that's everything that we have, um, if you enjoyed the show, we would encourage you to become a patron at patreoncom slash philosophy. You can get super cool six pack swag at uh, Teespring by searching six pack philosophy. You can also connect with us on social media by searching Six Pack Philosophy. Go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter. We come out every week when I remember. Uh, <laughs> every weekish. I'm 
getting better. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun and we hope you have too. Cheers. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 